In a land torn apart by years of bitter conflict, the daily struggle to survive is an ongoing battle. Feeding the family is a constant challenge. We travel to the occupied Palestinian territory to meet some inspirational women who are bringing hope to thousands. Here's their story. My name is Istithkar Abdel Karim. I live in Sebastia and I have two sons and two daughters. It's 6 30 in the morning and Istithkar has already done a couple of hours of work. I learned to cook at a very young age, even before I got married at 17 years old. And now she and other women like her are putting their cooking skills to vital use affecting the lives of tens of thousands. Istithkar lives in the middle of the conflict-ravaged West Bank, part of the occupied Palestinian territory. A history of border blockades and severe restrictions on movements and access have left the economy crippled and food too expensive for most people. Unemployment is rampant, and in this troubled climate, women's contribution to the family income is vital, but tragically all too rare. It's really hard to bring home money on a daily basis when you don't have a fixed monthly salary. The number of Palestinian women fully employed is one of the lowest in the world. So in 2010, Istithkar and many other women like her decided it was time for action. With support from both the Palestinian authorities and international funding, they turned themselves into entrepreneurs. To take over the role of family bread winners, they literally became bread makers. Istithkar now prepares healthy meals, which she sells at a subsidized rate to the some 400 hungry schoolgirls who once paid much more for their lunch. I like to make stuffed chicken because everybody likes it. And I make msakhan and yogurt soup. Her job became even more crucial when her husband lost his job. First, it helped me psychologically, and then as well financially, since I never had my own income before, and we always depended on my husband's. Now, in the poorest communities in the West Bank, these tasty meals prepared by local women like Istithka feed a staggering almost 70,000 schoolchildren but it's not just about numbers. In a region where access to food is limited, ensuring children eat nutritiously is crucial, says Zain Hamad, a dietitian with the Palestinian Ministry of Education. Certain health problems have fallen significantly, such as obesity and anemia. So significantly that the anemia rate, which handicaps children's learning ability, has plummeted from a quarter of all children to just a handful. We're really concerned not just about getting enough calories into children. We want to make sure that their general nutritional status is at such a level that we can ensure their academic achievement. Alia El Yasser is head of the UN Women Office in the occupied Palestinian territory, which is supporting this project to employ rural women to run school canteens. You really feel like it's a snowball effect. Not only is this good for the children, she says, but for the entire population. You see the effect not just on individuals, you really see it on families and on communities. The number one priority that we're hearing from women and communities is that they need income. They need a source of income that is somehow they can depend on. This was especially true for Istithkar and a feeling shared by this group here at one of 17 UN women supported Sabaya Women's Centers. At 
this location alone, they make daily meals for 1,500 students. Whilst the women enjoy having a salary, one of their biggest hurdles was to overcome their husband's traditional reluctance to having a working wife. Before, the men used to dislike the idea of their wives leaving the house and working, says Samar Musa Akabne, who organizes the centers in this region. Now that they got used to the project and their wives started getting paid, the husband started helping their wives with their work. And one husband who now relishes his wife's new entrepreneurial role is Ahmed Suleiman Istikhar's husband. After Ahmed lost his job, they were able to open this small shop which he now runs paid for with his wife's earnings. She now helps in every aspect of life. Through her work with the school canteen, she contributes financially even supporting our children in college. Because I couldn't pay these costs of tuition on my own. He's now embracing his wife's non-traditional role as economic head of their household. I'm very proud of my wife because she does her job and more. And Istithka also feels pleased with the results of her efforts. I used to be shy dealing with people, but I got stronger and more self-confident. I'm hoping my work will continue and will just get better and better. And I'll carry on working all my life. Istithka and her family continue to enjoy the fruits of her labors, and for her and the 200 other Palestinian women like her, their new economic independence offers them and the thousands who depend on them a ray of hope for the future in this troubled land.